hello friends hope you all are doing well so uh, this is the next video in this high yield traction theory series in this video again i will explain uh, some advanced concept of traction theory so this is pts 1.5 okay so this is me you know already about me now if you have watched my previous videos so moving ahead i was explaining in my previous video the parameters which are being used to uh, to describe the tractive para tractive performance of two tractors so if you you have two tracks tractors and if you want to compare uh, the performance of two tractor or if you want to know which tractor is better then uh, these parameters will help you to decide which uh, which tractor is better okay so these are of uh, prime importance so i have told you there are five dimensionless parameters which are used to describe tractive performance of a tractor okay so first one is travel reduction ratio or slip second is motion resistance ratio or rolling resistance ratio third one is net traction ratio or coefficient of traction or also called pull by weight ratio fourth is your gross traction ratio and final one is your tractive efficiency in my last video i have already explained everything about travel reduction ratio or slip if you have not watched that video please go back and watch first that video and then come back and then start this video okay in this video i will explain your next ratio which is the motion resistance ratio mrr or rolling resistance ratio okay so uh, when i use the term motion resistance or rolling resistance it means the force the resistance force which will resist the movement of your tractor in both forward as well as in backward direction so if i if i am using only the term motion resistance or rolling resistance if i, I if i am using motion resistance it means that it is resistance force uh, which resisting your tractor to move forward or backward uh, when i am using the term rolling resistance it means that it is a resistance force which is which is resisting the rolling of your tire okay so basically but when i am using this motion resistance ratio and rolling resistance ratio so it is a ratio which is unitless or dimensionless okay so mind the difference between all these two terms okay so basically it is also referred as coefficient of rolling resistance rr or we also denote it by rho okay so basically it is the ratio of uh, of rolling resistance rr force rolling resistance force divided by normal reaction force okay so uh, this rolling resistance how to measure it this will be if you know mrr ratio then it will be the multiplication of mrr into rr now this rr consists of so many things these things are this rr is basically what rear reaction or normal load force normal reaction force okay i will again explain it when i will make uh, your uh, the video on weight transfer now this wv is weight of your tractor or weight of your vehicle wm is weight of your implement wt is the weight transfer now what is weight transfer that i will explain it to you uh, in my weight transfer video right now you you just consider that when you attach implement to your tractor then there will be some amount of weight transfer from front to the rear front tire front axle to the rear axle as well as from implement side on to the tractor so from implement side on to the tractor uh, the weight transfer will be 65% of draft force this uh, this this thing is being given by a scientist called fm george you don't need to remember these names so you just remember that uh, weight transfer for mounted implement will be 65% of draft force now what is the mounted implement you you might have seen three point linkage of the tractor with the help of you which you are attaching your implement into the tractor okay so if 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 an implement is attached with the help of all the three point three link three point linkages then it is that then those implements are called mounted implement okay so it is fully supported by your hydraulic system so so for mounted implements this uh, weight transfer will be 65% of d then second last term is suction force v which is basically 20% of d now the question come what is suction force so you all might have seen mb plow or cultivator okay so i am making an mb plow over here so your mb plow will some look like something like this okay so if this is an mb plow you might have seen this is the part which is going into the soil so you all have seen whether it is mb plow or cultivator that doesn't matter this part is not vertical the part which is going into the soil is not vertical it is acting at certain angle okay and when you are you are pulling this with the help of your tractor three point linkage that pull force will not be uh, perfectly horizontal so because of this angle that pull force will act at certain angle okay so because pull force is acting at certain angle with respect to horizontal 
so this this component this if this angle is theta then horizontal component of this pull force will be your draft draft force d and the vertical component of this pull force this will be your suction force v so it is the suction force v due to which your implement will, will acquire certain depth okay so if you if you want your implement to run at 10 10 cm depth then due to this v only your implement is getting at that that depth and once it acquire 10 cm depth then your uh, hydraulic system will start operating and it will hold your implement at that 10 cm depth so that it will it won't go beyond 10 cm depth okay so this is this is this suction force so research says that suction force is basically 20% of your draft force okay guys so be clear in what is this suction force and what is this draft force if you still have doubt in this you can ask me in comment section what is your doubt i will be more than happy to explain it to you again so uh, next thing is uh, this er and ef so what is er and what is ef so uh, i will again i will explain this in detail in uh, in my weight transfer video but right now for your understanding whenever your your tractor weight is being supported by your rear your rear tire and front tires okay so if if this is suppose this is your rear tire then your tractor weight is being supported by this rear tire okay so ideally this supporting force will act at the center okay so this will be your rr force supporting force okay but in actual condition uh, if your direction of motion is this then due to load coming on this track this tire there will be some deflection okay and due to all these things your center of pressure will move in this direction ahead from the rear axle center okay and due to the movement of center of pressure your this this rr is no longer acting at the center of your rear axle rather it will act somewhere here at some offset distance okay guys so this offset distance this distance this distance is so this distance is basically er if it is a rear tire then it is known as er if this is front tire then we call it ef okay so this is a centricity i hope you understood it okay so uh, this motion resistance ratio is also being used to calculate this eccentricity of your tire okay so basically your eccentricity is the multiplication of motion resistance ratio and rolling radius of your tire this this rr is not this rr this rr is rolling radius and this rr is normal reaction force okay so front for front tire this will be mrr into rr for rear tire it will be uh, mrf so this subscript f okay now moving forward how to measure this uh, rolling resistance so there are two things one is brixius equation and second one is this wismerluth equation brixius was a scientist and wismerluth was also a two different scientist who have worked on this topic Uh, to calculate how to calculate traction how to calculate tractor efficiency how to calculate motion resistance how to calculate coefficient of traction so brixius has basically considered this uh, mobility number and this slip okay so there are lot of parameters included in uh, this mobility number whereas wismerluth has only considered this cn okay now you know what is cn and what is bn if you don't know what is cn and what is bn then please go back and watch my previous video okay without understanding cn and bn you will not be able to understood the concept of traction properly so you don't need to remember this brixius equation but because they will not ask this brixius equation because lot of parameters are included in this so in examination they will not ask this this equation question on this equation but they will they do ask they are, they are asking regularly questions on this uh, this equation okay so only one thing cn is included in what is cn you know already if you don't know then go go back and watch my previous video okay so in previously also i had told that if you go on concrete surface your cone index will be infinite okay because you cannot put uh, put your cone penetrometer inside the soil okay so if cone index is infinite then cn will also be infinite if cn is infinite then this whole term will become zero and if this whole term becomes zero then your coefficient of rolling resistance rho will be 0.04 therefore the coefficient of rolling resistance will be 0.04 for concrete surface guys please remember this this thing that for concrete surface coefficient of rolling resistance is 0.04 and how it is coming it is coming from your wismerluth equation from here from here also you can derive it 
if your mobility number if your cn is infinite then bn will also become infinite bn will become infinite this will become zero this will also become zero so again here also it is 0.04 okay so this is how a 0.04 coefficient is coming for a concrete surface okay now how, uh, how this motion resistance is coming so it is the combined effect of tire flexing then compaction of soil then bulldozing of soil due to accumulation of soil in front of tire and in the side of the tire and then lateral drag and viscosity as, as well as these all weight uh, self weight of tractor and implement all these things will contribute into the motion resistance and rolling resistance now how it vary with speed so if you see this graph this graph is for track tires but it also holds true for uh, tractor tire so if you see a single graph either this or this for below 40 kmph speed the uh, the change in rolling resistance is not significant your y axis is coefficient of rolling resistance x axis is your speed but once you cross 40 kmph speed uh, this rolling resistance will start increasing why it will, it will start increasing is due to uh, air drag below 40 kmph your air resistance is not significant but after 40 kmph air resistance will become very high so for your tractor your max speed, speed is only 40 kmph so in case of tractor we are not considering any air resistance in calculating rolling resistance force but if you have some high speed cars then for that you have to consider um, one one more factor which will be air drag or air resistance while calculating the coefficient of rolling resistance so which is, if you increase your speed your coefficient of rolling resistance will increase but if you see these two graphs the first one is for bias ply tire second one is radial tire so radial tire will have less coefficient of rolling resistance for any particular speed okay so that's why i have explained it to you in in case of tire uh, lecture that radial tire will give you better traction and better fuel efficiency because radial tire will have less coefficient of rolling resistance i hope now you understand it very well now I have explained it, uh, explained the concept of mobility number to you. Now, if you see y axis is coefficient of rolling resistance and x axis is your mobility number. So, you can see uh, for uh, low range of mobility number, once you start increasing the mobility number, your coefficient of rolling resistance will decrease drastically. Okay. And after that, the it is still reducing, but that rate of reduction is now less. So, if you increase your mobility number, your coefficient of rolling resistance is reducing. And if your coefficient of rolling resistance will reduce, then your traction will increase and your tractive efficiency will increase and your fuel efficiency will increase. So that is the significance of this mobility number Bn, which I have explained to you in my previous video. If you don't know about that, then go back and please watch what is the mobility number. Okay. So this is the significance of mobility number and rolling resistance. So I have explained uh, probably each and everything about uh, coefficient of rolling resistance or motion resistance ratio now how these all things are these all parameters are affecting traction that we will again discuss in my next video after discussing all five traction parameters okay guys so uh, thank you very much for watching please like this video and subscribe the channel for more update and do spread the word to your peers thank you very much